Welcome to my life as a wildlife photographer in winter times. My name is Gunnar, the snow here in Norway is deep, the temperatures are negative and it's not always easy to find wildlife. But today we're going to look at my local projects, we're going to see what happens to musk oxen after some days with blizzards and we're going to find out which eagle has the upper hand here in Northern Europe. <laughs> Temperatures started to fall in November, but the snow didn't really want it to come. At that time I was really involved with my local red squirrels. It is mid-November now and the days here in Norway are becoming quite short, though today the sun is out. So I thought I'd take this new toy out. Uh, this is the Nikko 400F 4.5. Just a small update along the way since this squirrel project becomes a bit more difficult. Because first of all, last week we had this, the first snowfall, we have December now. Suddenly, in two days or one and a half day, uh, we had 70 to 80 centimeters of snow just coming down. I'm glad that the height survived. I could see tracks after the animals, but they never showed when I was around at that time of the year. If you want to hear more about my experiences with the Nikko 400 F 4.5 and the Nikon Z9, don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on it. The review is on the way if it's not out already. January came quickly and I had a talk with Ton Vespi about cabins on Dovrefjell. He invited me to join them for their trip and that video you can find up there. I went scouting the day I arrived. The others came at night. On our first day together I had some issues with my hip, while the others found animals quite late to everyone's surprise. The other two days were spent on a mountaintop observing three adult musk ox bulls and a cow. One day later, the calf was found dead, which made us the last people to observe it alive. I know that this is a part of nature, and I'm privileged to have witnessed it. Still, every time I think or talk about that little calf, I can't feel but a bit sad. Just to imagine that it was out there that last night while the wind was picking up more and more, not even a year old. Without its mother to care for it, only the rough company of the males seemed very heartbreaking.
With that fresh memory in my mind, I returned to Dovrefjell only two and a half weeks later. When I parked the car, the wind was already up to 60 km per hour and I could see two male mosk oxen in the distance. Yeah, this time I brought binoculars, because I didn't want to stay at home. It's recommended by real professionals. You need binoculars to do this. It took me a bit more than an hour to get to the animals, but it was a hard hour. The temperatures were just slightly negative, if not around zero. This means that the snow is really unstable, which made me sink in with my snowshoes up to 40 centimeters, making every step feel like 20. Ten minutes from the animals, they laid down to my disappointment. I met a group right there and the guy told me that he is gonna leave because his guests are feeling too cold and that I should look out for myself. As always in these situations, I tried to change my clothing first. And I took some vlogging equipment already out of the backpack. When I finally got into my down jacket and pants, I could see that my equipment and my backpack was completely buried under snow. I started to feel uneasy, but I came for a reason. So I put that lens on my tripod, leveled it and tried to record the musk oxen. The more I tried to focus on them or even see them, I realized why they probably laid down beforehand. They understood that the wind was coming, that the white oat would be coming. I was so concentrated on my business of filming out there, that I didn't really understand the danger I'm in fully until right then. And that's when the panic kicked in for a short moment. Pack your stuff, get the F out of here, now. With all the gear packed, I stumbled directly against the wind to get back to the road I came from. If I would hit it, I easily find my way back. If anything could kill me out there, right now, it would be panic. So I calmed my mind and I went on slow but steady. Yeah, well, today... Doesn't look much better than yesterday, it actually looks worse. Yesterday, extreme winds. And I love extreme weather, makes for better photos. And I experienced quite a bit of extreme weather when I stayed on Svalbard and studied on Svalbard. But I think I never had to face it alone. And when I'm out there and I'm suddenly in complete white, 80 kilometers of wind. Never forget, the mountains can be dangerous. It is always okay to turn around. I'm planning on guiding some musk ox tours this coming summer and fall, but the winter time has to wait a little bit longer. In the future, you will be able to vote on these videos and tell me which segment you like the most in the comments. Then I can make a standalone video in more detail. And just to test that, let me know down below which segment you like the most when you've seen all of this video. During the night to day three, the highway got closed. But when I woke up, the storm was gone and I could finally go out there and find my subjects.
there's a musk oxen right over there. This is the first day on the second trip to Dovelfjell this year, um, where I can actually, yeah, I can see animals because there is no storm. And uh, yeah, we'll try to get a bit closer, take a few photos and videos, not concentrating on vlogging too much. Have to pay attention and also have to pay attention to the weather. Found a group over here with six animals. It's more like two groups together, four males and another two males. And one of them is really old. I don't think that he has too much to say anymore, but he looks really impressive. <laughs> okay, one of the other group is just going over there. really fighting over there. Seems like they have to get some energy out after like sitting in a storm for two days. It's insane. Today was really exciting. Just action-wise and filming-wise. Just look at this for a second. Photography-wise, I didn't get so much because I get, couldn't get really so close to the animals. But filming-wise, I'm so happy that I got out, finally, after two days of storm. They're fighting really a lot today. I uh, haven't seen a fight like this ever before. And what you see is that one is normally stronger than the other and they often just knock their heads together. And after two or three rounds, one of them normally retreats or they go into this fighting stance, but then at last they back off and run away. And what you can see is that this old ox that I talked before about, uh, he is directly running away. He doesn't seem to have the energy to fight with the younger ones anymore. Now today it also looks quite close to white out. We started kind of clear and now it's like closing in. 
um, but today no storm so I'm not uh, really scared I will find my way back I had some local projects here in Trondheim when I came back. One day I found the dead body of a bird of prey on the road, hit by a car. I figured that it's better to take the carcass and bring it into the local forest so that not other birds that feed on it get hit by a car as well. So I grabbed the roadkill, I grabbed a wildlife camera and I went to work. It took some time, but finally I could observe two residents. To my surprise, none of them were birds. First was a fox I observed a few times before, with cameras and in person. The second visitor was this small stout in winter coat. Maybe we get to photograph them at another time. But now it was time to focus on the local dippers. Ah, uh, seen it. Well, it's hard to find a location really close, flat to the water surface. And I'm a bit annoyed that there is snow everywhere in my clothing. But uh, I salute to my motivation to try this <laughs> anyhow. The white-throated dipper is Norway's national bird, which is why you can nearly find it close to every local creek during the whole year. A good subject for everyone. bird was right up here. It's a bit difficult, but it could be a bit more dramatic, right? Yeah, I just have to rethink the position a bit and then try my luck, because the stones are really in the way here. They can help as a nice bokeh, but you're limited in your options. Now February had still something in store for me, something new, some animals that I've never photographed before. Eagles from a height in Flatanga together with my biophoto group here in Trondheim. I did the three hour trip with my friend Edvard, he's also organizing a lot of these trips and we stopped at a local hotspot for Eider Ducks on our way. Just got the opportunity to photograph Eider Ducks for the first time really close up and that with the Nikon Z9. There's so much happening that it's hard to keep an oversight about which animal is spreading its wings or anything else. A great experience, uh, but you end up with a ton of photos. I think I have at least 800 in a really short time, which is a lot for me. the Eider Ducks it's about being at the right place of course but also at the right time and that's when it's high tide so the animals come in with the tides. Uh, if the tide is going lower and lower you're gonna have a problem because the birds are gonna move away from you again because then they just can't find any food anymore.
quite easy to focus on one duck when there's 20 to 30 of them and when they're actually nearly too close to focus. My favorite image was surprisingly not done with the Nikon Z9 and the 400 f4.5, but with the Nikon Z50 and the kit lens. <laughs> Next time we will be better prepared for all that chaos and the action. What a day! We made it to Flatanga in the evening and went out with our group in the early morning hours. Since I was the only one joining for the first time, the others were so kind to let me use two of the six openings, so that I could use both of my lenses during the day. It did not take long and three golden eagles were sitting in front of the height. Not too much action on the first day, but there was a second one to come. And the first day always gives you a good impression how the animals behave, so that you're just better on the second one. The stormy weather continued on the next day. The golden eagles were the first ones to show themselves around the height. But also the white-tailed eagles started to swarm around the area. Up to seven birds were trying to get a bite. Tempers were rising. But nobody really wanted to mess too much with the golden eagles. But when the golden eagles were finally done, the white-tailed eagles got their chance. And they were up for a fight.
even though that the white-tailed eagle is bigger than the golden eagle, the golden eagle shows more dominance over food and is not backing away from a fight. On some photos it might look like, like the white-tailed eagles got the upper hand, but it's always the golden eagle that goes out with the prize. That's it for this winter so far. I hope the next one gets more stable, colder, for more tent adventures. Don't forget to comment which was your favorite and if you like the new format. Feedback is always welcome. I hope to see you on the next edition about spring. The black rose is already getting at it. Thank you.